Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. Today's a bit of a special review in the sense that this amplifier that you see in front of me has actually been provided for review by a patron of the channel uh, and that is Anabove. So Anabove, hopefully A, I'm saying your name correctly um, and B, thank you very much for providing this amplifier on loan to me um, for a chance to review this. Uh, as you'll see shortly, I think it's a really valuable loan because the review is probably going to open some people's eyes, I hope. Before I get into the review though, I just want to talk briefly about the giveaways that are going on at the moment. We do have the Topping E30 giveaway underway. If you'd like to win the Topping E30, don't forget to comment on this video. Make sure you're also a subscriber, that's really important and the draw will be happening somewhere in very early July. Now the reason I want to talk about it a little bit though is I've also got a review coming up on linear power supplies versus switch mode power supplies. And to do that justice, I am going to probably need to keep the E30 with me for just a little bit longer. Uh, and that does mean there might be a slight delay in sending out the E30 giveaway to the winner. Uh, but I do want to get the draw done soon because it's been going on for a little while. So watch out on the channel for the next video in early July where I'll be announcing the winner. And don't forget to get your entries in now, either commenting and subscribing on this video or one of the previous three prior to this, or you can join up as a patron and get multiple entries into every single giveaway I ever do on the channel. That's enough about that for now though. Let's get on with the review. The Airish amplifier that I've got here comes from Gashelli Labs. Now I've, I think, heard some Gashelli Labs products in the past, but I've never owned one, I've never reviewed one before. So this is really my first taste of living with one for a while. Gashelli are a US based company and they make DACs and amplifiers that are very basic and I don't mean that as a knock. What I mean is they don't put a lot of cost into their casings. Instead what they do is they put all of their R&D and parts costs into the product itself, into the, the internals of the amplifiers and the DACs. So as you can see here, the product is fairly basic looking. It's a little aluminium case, it's got Perspex front and rear, um, and it's really got not much more going on than that. And that's probably one of the charms of the Gashelli product is that you're not paying for a pretty case or fancy branding or extra buttons that you maybe don't actually need. You're paying for the circuit design that goes on inside. What it also opens up is the ability to have your unit specced out in different color schemes because they're fairly simple parts. You can have different color Perspex face plates, a different color case. You can have aluminum, you can have all Perspex in some of their products. So it really allows you to express a bit of creativity of your own and, and your own personality, if you like, in terms of which color combinations you choose for your particular product. So now that we've talked a bit about Gashelli, let's talk specifically about the Airish. The Airish is a brand new amplifier that they recently released. It sells for 199 US dollars and it's a dedicated balanced amplifier. So yes, what that means is it has only balanced inputs on the back as well as a power input you can see there. And it's got a single balanced outlet on the front and a proper balanced volume pot. So what that means is it's got two channels completely separated within this volume control. Other than that, the only other things on this amplifier is a power button and a gain button. That's it, that's all it has and that's all it does. And that's what makes the Airish affordable, but also allows it to perform well despite the cost. Before I talk about that performance though, let's talk quickly about the measurements. So Gashelli have actually published all the measurements of the Airish on their own website, and it measures extremely well. So it's very clean, very low distortion, and obviously has good power because it is a balanced amplifier running two separate channels of amplification. So everything that you would look for in an amplifier is there on paper. The question is how does it sound and does it stack up to other amplifiers at the same price or sometimes more importantly, at a higher price? Is this a better option to save yourself some money on an amplifier that you can then spend somewhere else like say on better headphones? <laughs> I'm gonna get me tomorrow. I'm 
point that I should mention about the Airish is that I would have liked, and this is going to sound a bit silly, but I would have liked a basic user manual in there. Now the reason it might sound silly is because there's only two buttons, one set of inputs and one output. But the thing I would have liked to know, or the things I would have liked to know, is that the gain and the power buttons are long press buttons for their main function. So the gain you have to hold down for a couple of seconds to switch it between the unity gain and the six times gain. Now for those that haven't heard of unity gain before, that basically means it's taking the signal coming in and spitting that straight out. So all it's really doing is it's providing the drive for the headphone without actually increasing the signal level coming through. That can provide a cleaner signal with less distortion because it's not going through that amplification process so much as being given the power behind it to drive the headphones. The other thing that was not clear to me at first was with the power button, it takes a long press to power the unit on and off, but short presses will actually change the LED color within the casing. So the idea of that is that you can have multiple LED colors, depending on the color of your faceplate, it can change the look of your amplifier. I found it didn't make a huge amount of difference in the orange faceplates that Unabove chose, but I would imagine on different designs, it could look quite striking. For me, it's a, a minor feature, it doesn't have a huge impact. What was tricky though, was I was pressing the power button without knowing what was going on, and I was seeing these lights cycle through, and I had no idea what the lights were doing until I went hunting on the website to find out. And even then, it wasn't clearly explained, so I did have to do a bit of trial and error to work out what was happening. So it's a really, really, really minor point, but I thought it was worth mentioning because others might buy this amplifier and have the same struggles that I did. In my system, my budget amp of choice, and I say budget with inverted commas because obviously it's not the most budget amplifier, but my low end, easy accessible amplifier is the Drop THX AAA789 amplifier. Because it's well priced, it's not super affordable, but it's also not in that crazy thousand dollar plus echelon and it performs really well for the price. So that's been my reference go-to amplifier. If someone's looking for their first amp or a slight upgrade from maybe a very, very budget amplifier, the THX amplifier from Drop is always my go-to recommendation. So obviously that's what I put the Airish up against straight away. And I have to say, I was really impressed. They're different amps, they've got a different sound, but the Airish absolutely competes with the 789 and it's going to come more down to your, your preferences and your use case more so than which one is better or worse sound quality because in my opinion they're both performing about the same and that's fantastic when you've got a 199 US dollar amplifier here versus the Drop 789 which sells for 299 US so there's a hundred US dollars difference here for those of us in Australia that means it's about a hundred and thirty forty dollars difference between the two amplifiers so all of a sudden, if this can perform as well, and you don't need some of the extra features of the 789, then you've got yourself a really great offering. So let's talk a bit about what's different between the two, and I might quickly start with some of the features of the two. Now, obviously, as you've already seen from this one, it only has balanced inputs and balanced headphone output. What that means is it's not gonna give you the versatility of something like the 789, where you've got the pass through, you've got single-ended input, you've got balanced input, there's a lot of extra things going on in the 789. It's also got the auto power off if you care about that, and it's got the separate sockets for balanced 6.3 and 3.5 mil connections. With this one, you can always use an adapter to connect something like a 2.5 mil balance plug to the output here, so that definitely works, I've tried that, but it is limited in the sense that you can't just grab whatever headphone and plug it in like you can with the 789. So first and foremost, if you're looking for a more versatile connectivity amplifier, then it might be worth spending that extra 100 US dollars. But if you're just looking for sound quality, what I'm gonna say next is more key to you than those specific features and connectivity options. So sound quality. These two amps have quite a different presentation. They both produce excellent quality sound, but the way they deliver that sound and the character of the sound is quite different. The 789 tends to be a very, very clean sound. Some may say it's ever so slightly artificial sounding, but there's no denying that for the 299 US dollar price tag, it's an extremely good neutral presentation amplifier. The soundstage isn't fantastic. It's fairly wide, not particularly deep, but it does separate instruments really well. When you put it up next to something like the Airish though, you suddenly hear what a different presentation could actually sound like. In the case of the Airish, the soundstage is narrower, but it's deeper. So you get more of a sense of maybe sitting in a room with performers where they're actually out in a three-dimensional space rather than a recording in more of a two-dimensional left to right space. The other thing it does nice is it provides a sense of, I don't wanna say warmth because I don't know that it's warmth, but that analog character to the sound without getting muddy or thick. 
there does seem to be a little bit of extra bass emphasis coming from the Airish, and I don't know if it's actually emphasized from a frequency response point of view, or if it's the way the power is being delivered to the headphones is giving it slightly more presence and impact in the bass. I didn't feel like someone had come along and turned up the bass on say an equalizer, but I did feel like when I went from the 789 to the Airish, suddenly the music was fuller and richer and kind of more alive with rhythm because of that bass and that lower mid range is slightly the same as well. What that meant for listening was that out of the two, if I was looking for a technical presentation of the, of the recording, I'd go to the 789. But if I was looking for pure enjoyment of the recording, I'd go to the Airish. Now, interesting, that was, that was true for all the headphones I tried with it, whether it was the Meza Imperians, and hopefully I'm saying that one right now, or it was the Focar Clears, or even the AudioQuest Night Owls, all of them sounded great with the Airish because of that really smooth, coherent, analog style presentation but there was still plenty of resolution. Maybe not quite as much resolution as the 789, but enough that if you weren't doing a direct AB, you'd never feel like you were missing something. Because it is a fully balanced amplifier and it does have plenty of power, I wasn't expecting great things with IEMs. So I fired up the Airish with my Noble K10s and also with my AudioFly AF1120 Mark IIs. And in both cases, I was really shocked that the sound was fantastic. There was no noise, no hiss of any sort and there was just enough range on the volume control that I was able to enjoy the headphones without any channel imbalance. There is a tiny bit of imbalance at the very, very, very bottom end of that volume pot, but most people for normal listening levels will be able to get past where that channel imbalance is, unless you've got a super hypersensitive earphone, like maybe the Campfire Audio Andromeda's where I did try them, I was struggling a little bit to get enough range out of the volume pot, but it was workable at a pinch. Not ideal, but workable. All in all, what I've found is I was just really blown away by how well this amplifier performed for the price and for its really simple form factor. I like how basic it is, I like how simple it is, and I like knowing that all of the money I've spent has gone into the design of the circuitry and the components that they've chosen for it. For me, if I was choosing between the Airish and say the 789, what it would come down to is a couple of things. The 789 is definitely a preferable choice if you're gonna be using IEMs fairly often because you do have more range on the volume pot and it does have the direct connection for 3.5 mil jack. Also, of course, if you do need to daisy chain your amplifiers, having the output from the 789 is a real bonus. In terms of sound quality, I'd also choose the 789 if I was looking for an analytical, clean, neutral, and uncolored, unaltered presentation of the sound. Although you could argue that the 789 is adding a slightly electronic sheen across the music because it isn't quite as organic and analog sounding as something like the Airish. So flip that over now, if I was looking for an amplifier for pure enjoyment, still good resolution, and something that's really gonna thrive with music like rock, pop, blues, anything that enjoys that little bit of extra presence and, and solidity, if you like, in the bass, the Airish is a really impressive offering. The fact that it plays beautifully with all sorts of different headphones, whether it's the Imperians, the Night Owls, the Clears, even IEMs, says to me it's a great option for someone who's looking for a budget amplifier with good versatility and with that rich analog and organic sound. For the time that I've had it in my system on loan from Unabove, I would have to say that I've preferred the Airish consistently over the 789. And I really like the 789, but this is just more enjoyable. It's still clean, it's still resolving, but it's just got that more enjoyable, engaging sound and that musicality to it, if you like. I'm more likely to find myself bobbing my head and tapping my feet when I listen to the Airish than I am listening to the 789. And anyone who's watched my channel before will know that that's often a reference point for me, which product has me more engaged with the music. And in this case, it's the Airish every single time. So to sum it all up, if you've got a budget of about 199 US dollars, and you're looking for a balanced amplifier, mostly to drive headphones, but still capable of driving IEMs quite happily, this is an amplifier you should absolutely look at. You can run a single-ended input into it with adapters. So if you've just got RCA outputs like I do with the Chord Q-Test, you can still use it with adapters. But ideally, if you've got a balanced DAC and you're looking for an amplifier, do check out the Airish. It's really impressive with what it can do at the price at which it sits. As always, I should clarify, and this goes for all of my reviews. If I'm talking about a 199 US dollar amplifier and I'm saying it performs really well, 
That's not to say it performs as well as a $3,000 amplifier or a $1,000 amplifier even. You'll generally find I'll put it up next to other amplifiers in the review to give you a sense of where it sits in the scheme of things. So this is a great amplifier at $199 US dollars based on my comparison with the Drop 789. It's a great amplifier at $299 US dollars, albeit losing some of the functionality and features of the 789 in the process. But the point being, in its price range, it is performing extremely well. And if that's your budget, this is something you should definitely take a look at. So before I wrap up, I just want to say thank you once again to Anubav for making the Airish available to me for this review. It's really valuable when people can put forward products like this for me to share with the community. I know not everyone's in a position to do that. So I really appreciate that you've given us this chance, Anubav. Thank you so much. Also, don't forget about the giveaways. The Topping E30 DAC will be drawn shortly. Make sure you comment and subscribe to this video if you want to be in the draw. And also, you'll want to be subscribed because I've got a huge run of different reviews coming up. I've got the Topping P50 linear power supply and a conversation about power supplies in general coming up. I've got the Moondrop SSR IEM. I've got the KBear K2 IEM. I've got Bayer Dynamic DT880 limited edition 250 ohm models coming up. There's plenty of stuff in the pipeline. So do make sure you subscribe. Keep a watch out for the new videos. You can ring that bell if you would like to be notified when they come through. And in the meantime, stay safe, happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.